Hello and welcome again to the Death Row and Executions channel. I'm Paco Rivera. Coincidentally, the last video I did was on a death row inmate named Virgil Presnell who had killed an eight-year-old girl. The next inmate on death row scheduled to be executed is because he killed an eight-year-old girl, a crime that occurred eight years after the crime Presnell had committed. But even before the death of eight-year-old Vicki Lynn Hoskinson in Arizona, a career pedophile named Frank Jarvis Atwood had already been convicted in 1981 of lewd and lascivious acts and the kidnapping of a young boy in California. He had forced the boy to perform a sexual act on him. Just three years later, in May of 1984, California released him on parole. Just four months after that, he violated his parole by going to Arizona, and upon arriving there, Frank Atwood killed Vicki Lynn Hoskinson. Even before the 1981 conviction in California, Frank Atwood, in 1974, when he was 18 years old, was charged with lewd and lascivious conduct with a 14-year-old girl. But instead of jail time, he was ordered to undergo psychiatric treatment at a mental health facility. California knew about that previous incident and released him anyway on parole after just three years following the crime he had committed there. By 1984, Atwood was basically a drifter who never held a job and was living off his parents. He was driving a nine-year-old black 75 Datsun 280Z. On September 17, eight-year-old Vicki Lynn Hoskinson was riding her pink bicycle back home in what residents at the time had considered to be the very safe streets of a district in Tucson, Arizona called Flowing Wells in Pima County. Biggie had just dropped a birthday card letter into a mailbox a few blocks from home. 28-year-old Frank Atwood rammed his car into Vicki Lynn's pink bicycle and he kidnapped her. When the girl's mother realized that Vicky Lynn had taken too long to return home, she sent her older daughter to go look for her. Vicky Lynn's sister found the pink bike in the road and alerted her mother, who went to get it. She then panicked and called 911. Two teenage boys would later tell authorities that, that they saw a black car with California license plates moving very slowly along the road where Vicky Lynn's pink bike was found. About 20 minutes before the kidnapping, a gym teacher named Sam Hall at Homer Davis Elementary School became suspicious when he saw a strange and unknown scruffy looking man with long hair behind the wheel of a black Datsun. And the man was gazing at children playing in the schoolyard. Fortunately, that gym teacher had the foresight to take down the license plate number as the car drove away. Later that day, Frank Atwood met with a group of other drifters he was friends with. They were hanging out in De Anza Park in Tucson. Those drifters would later report that Frank Atwood had blood on his hands and clothing and he was wiping up a bloody knife. He also had cactus needles on his pants. Atwood had bragged to them that he had just stabbed a drug dealer after a drug deal went bad. Atwood later went with friends to shoot pool in a bar. One of those transient friends was a man named James McDonald. At some point, Atwood and McDonald decided together to go to New Orleans in Louisiana, and off they went. But the old Dotson broke down a little over halfway there in Kerrville, Texas. A day after Vicki Lynn Hoskinson went missing, word had spread quickly and it would seem the entire city of Tucson had joined in the search for the eight-year-old girl. Flyers were hung and handed out and vast wooded and desert areas all around the city were searched. The FBI was then called in by local authorities to investigate the matter as a kidnapping. When the gym teacher, Sam Hall, got word of the missing girl, he reported the suspicious male with long hair driving a black car he had seen staring at children playing in the schoolyard. 
and he gave the FBI the California license plate number that he had written down. Things began to move quickly after that. The FBI obtained the name for the owner of that vehicle as Frank Jarvis Atwood. And when Atwood's rap sheet was received showing him with a record of being a violent convicted pedophile, all kinds of red flags shot up. The FBI arrived at the residence of Frank Atwood's parents in Los Angeles, but at the time, they had no idea where their son was. The FBI gave the Atwood couple a phone number to call if they hear from him, and they left. Not long after that, the phone rang in the Atwood's home. Frank Atwood called to ask his parents to wire money to him to get his car fixed. He told them about the mechanic's shop where he was located. After the call ended, Frank Atwood's father called the FBI and provided that information. Agents in Texas then arrested Atwood. His car was impounded and processed. While a search team found no hairs or fibers or anything inside the car linking Vicki Lynn to having been in it, an FBI lab did find particles of pink paint on the bumper of Atwood's car positively matching the pink paint from Vicki Lynn's bicycle. And metallic particles from Atwood's car bumper, particles from the bumper of a 75 Datsun 280Z were found on Vicki Lynn's bike. That was enough to get a conviction for the kidnapping in Arizona, but not murder, because there was no body. Yet. Seven months after Vicki Lynn went missing, in April of 1985, someone walking through a remote desert area in Tucson came upon a small skull and some skeletal remains. A team of investigators arrived at the location and found that those bones were scattered over a wide area, possibly the result of various creatures and animals feeding on the decomposing body. The skull with teeth was sent to a lab and dental records positively confirmed that it was Vicki Lynn Hoskinson. That was enough to get the murder conviction. Authorities were unable to determine exactly how Vicki Lynn had died, as there was no indication of blunt force trauma found on her remains. But it is believed from witness reports that Frank Atwood had blood on his hands and clothes and was cleaning a bloody knife that she was stabbed. Those clothes and the knife were never found. There was also no evidence that Vicki Lynn was sexually assaulted, but surely that was the motive, investigators believe, was the reason for the kidnapping. On December 17, 1991, while on death row, Frank Atwood married a 29-year-old woman named Rachel Lee Tenney, a woman from Tucson, Arizona, where the crime had taken place. They were married in prison, and it was witnessed by Frank's mother. This case was presented in an episode of the FBI Files called The Predator that you can see right here on YouTube. Personally, I thought the episode wasted a lot of footage on a lot of false leads, but it's a one-hour show, so I guess they had to fill in the time somehow. Also, if you are a fan of Forensic Files, as I am, you may have seen this case presented in one of their episodes called Speck of Evidence. I preferred that showing as it was only 20 minutes long and it stuck mostly to all the critical details of the case. That episode can also be seen here on YouTube and other streaming services. If you would like to see more of these death row stories, go ahead and subscribe so that you are alerted when the next one comes out. I'm Paco Rivera. Bye for now.